Penny, it's great to have you here with us today. Uh, to introduce yourself, could you tell us a little more about your background? Well, Todd, I have been in the utility business now, I hate to say it, over 25 years. And as you know, I have background both in customer service and in the operations side of the house. And today I have the fortunate opportunity to lead the customer care organization for Northeast Utilities. And we serve uh, over 3 million customers, gas and electric, in the New England area and uh, constantly are looking at how we take our service to a, ne a new level. You've worked in a number of territories that are susceptible to major events. Tell us a little bit about your learnings from, and experience from that. Well, in my career, having worked now for three utilities, I actually got my first experience with large protracted events with Hurricane Hugo back in uh, uh, the late 80s at uh, Duke Power Company. But today in the Northeast, we certainly have seen our share of large events, whether it be uh, Tropical Storm Irene or Hurricane Sandy or the really weird Snowtober event, or most recently, uh, the blizzard Nemo that caused quite a bit of damage for our customers. In each of these events, they're large, they have protracted outages, and it becomes a challenging customer experience. We're in a world of always connected, always on, customers getting instant answers. How is that impacting their expectations and what you have to do with social media and with your communication? Well, in these major events, customers want to know when their power is going to be restored and they want information and transparency of information. And I think some of the best trends that I'm seeing that utilities are putting into place is a commitment to provide a global ETR fairly quickly within 24 or 48 hours of an event that's going to be protracted. And I'm talking an event with hundreds of thousands of customers out and multiple day outages. So being able to tell customers that we are going to provide a global ETR and when that's going to be and then meeting that commitment, very important. Then moving from that to be able to provide more granular level information and ETRs about their own outages uh, throughout the event. Uh, becomes important in these larger and protracted events. But customers, no different than any of us, need to make decisions on how they are going to survive during these one of these large, long outage duration events. Utilities job one on outage has been to restore, but now customers also expect you to communicate. What's that mean internally for how you bring those changes and the culture changes required? Customers today are certainly more connected and they want information, uh, a lot of information, they're curious about what is going on and they're very much into the social media. I just left uh, the executive summit at CS Week and listened to a panel of folks talk about their response to Hurricane Sandy and Tropical Storm Irene and Snowtober and I was blown away by some of the major trends that I'm seeing. Social media, Todd, is becoming a major way that we work with our customers and communicate with our customers. And we're using that not only to push information out to customers, but to respond to questions. Uh, the uh, risk of ignoring the ROI, the conversation that's going on today is too high. The conversation is happening. We utilities can choose to join it or ignore it, but it will happen. And the most successful utilities are getting in that game and they're part of that conversation and they're responding to these comments and, and uh, questions that are showing up via social media. Some other trends I'm seeing for these large protracted events that I think are having a positive impact with customers. The use of videos. These videos posted by utilities multiple videos. Con Ed had over 25 videos they posted during Tropical Storm Irene that had hundreds of thousands of hits on YouTube. That's powerful. This is a way for us to get our message out about how we prepare for storms, how we're responding to storms. It helps customers see our folks in the field and, and recognize that we are really uh, committed to, to getting every last customer uh, engaged and restored with power. Another trend is working with the municipalities and creating portals or unique uh, community websites so those communities can see what is happening or those community officials. This is a trend I'm seeing uh, across the industry. And these are pen-based portals often 
where the where the community has the ability to see their information for their community local officials and this is where information around wire down locations crew locations priority situations are communicated and and uh, and uh, between both the the municipality and the utility and so now we have a shared uh, joint uh, communication channel that everyone can see and can see the progress on. That is really making a big impact with our communities. Uh, we at Northeast Utilities put that into place uh, after Tropical Storm Irene and before Hurricane Sandy and really saw it tip uh, the scales in regards to how our communities responded to us. They liked the ability to be able to see what's going on in their community, see the crews that are there, talk about their priorities and, and be able to see our action on it. So that uh, type of community portal, very important and one of the trends that we're seeing in the industry. Mobile apps are becoming very popular, whether it's my six-year-old who's downloading an app or it's uh, a customer that's out of power. Being able for our customers to, to, to be able to download an app, to get information about their outage, to, to get updates about it, and to get weather information, be able, uh, Con Edison, for example, is even allowing our customers to connect right to Twitter and get the Twitter feeds right from that mobile app. I think this is a space that's going to develop rapidly. I think that utilities are going to need to keep on top of this because whatever solution they develop today is probably going to be out of date two years from now. So this is a space that is evolving very rapidly and we're going to need to keep on top of. That really brings the pressure between what we're trying to do from a customer perspective, being advocates for the customers, uh, as those of us who are in this customer service space and utilities, and what our operations folks are challenged with. From a customer perspective, the customers expect that transparency. They order a package now, send a package on FedEx, they can track it all the way through. When it got onto the truck, where the truck was as it's moving along on the interstate, they see information all the way along. From an operations perspective, that is very different to be able to provide that information and there's still a huge hesitancy of whether that's the right thing to do. And uh, I think there's still some needed conversations around how much information we put out there. Some of the arguments, of course, I often hear as we have these discussions in utilities around sharing information about where crews are at or where outages are at is are we creating a situation where we're actually informing folks who perhaps have ill intent of where they can uh, perhaps take advantage of customers. So we recognize that we have, a, there is a little bit of a balance here of ensuring that our customers, are, information remains protected and yet providing the customers with the information they need about our restoration pro progress. I think there are ways to do it. I think some very innovative utilities are doing it. The outage maps, if utilities have not invested in that, they need to providing those maps where a customer can go in by their town and see what's going on in their town, their locality, how many customers are out. And I think we can even get much more advanced with providing information about crews available in those areas. And towns are expecting it. And quite honestly, what we're seeing after some of these major events is our regulators, if we're not out there creating it, our regulators are going to demand it.